Welcome everyone. It's the it's the 11th of February in the area where we're focused today. So it's early morning, 11th of February. This is documentation office hours. Uh, it's I think 7.30 a.m. India Standard Time. So thanks for being here everyone. And uh, topics I've got on the agenda, uh, typos with Gavin Mogan, uh, news, Jenkins is the way content. Uh, Gavin's been our creator there. And then Google Summer of Code, if we've got any topics there. And She Code Africa Contributhon, that's me. And then the Linux installers switching to system D is a worthwhile topic for discussion about how do we communicate, et cetera. And then Meg, should we have something for, um, oh, Open PRs? If we have time for it, yeah, I've got that list there. I didn't move anything up. Okay, so yeah, and bring in the list. Great, all right. right. Uh, Dheeraj, anything, any topics you wanted to bring? Uh, yes, I do, but uh, I think it will be under the Google Summer of Code Office Hours topic. Okay, great, all right, so let's do that then. Okay, so Gavin, uh, in terms of news this week we had Jenkins 2.319.3 released as an LTS security fix. The fixed thing that was fixing was a medium vulnerability, so not terribly risky. Uh, and we had 2.334 weekly that released with the same. And next week, Jenkins 2.335 includes uh, form modernization which has been a long running um, pull request that is now merged. And so the first time it will appear in LTS is June. Any questions about the news? For modernization, that's the UI change you've been talking about or is there more UI? Well, there, there have been multiple phases of UI changes, right? So we had, right. We had the switch from tables to divs for layout that happened about nine months ago. And in the 2.319 series, we had some, some UI improvements. Now in 2.332, there's another set of UI improvements. And this is the next generation after that. So the March LTS will have one layer of UI improvements and then another layer happens in the June LTS. So in terms of going through and scrubbing all the docs for screenshots that need to be replaced and stuff. Should we wait till the June LTS, do you think? Depends. This one, I think we'll have to, we, we should look at it and see, show ourselves some demos to, to compare it after this weekly is out um, to see how, how dramatic the changes are. I believe that's mostly in configuration forms and those kind of screenshots are quite rare. Okay. The, well, I did bring that uh, topic up as a... I think it was She Codes Africa idea, but um, at some point making notes, maybe not doing it yet, but yeah, uh, automate the screenshot process just by like writing down, first steps would be writing down how you get to it, right? So like a metadata somewhere in the uh, ASCII doc or a separate YAML file or something just so that the next person who takes it knows how to repeat it. And then a later project could be taking that data and actually automating it. So you can, you know, generate new screenshots every release if you wanted to. Ooh. Good. Okay. I think Thanks. it'd be a fun summer project. You know, I don't, I think it could be done easily within a month. Mm. Like there's a lot of tooling out there. It's right. a matter of practice and describing it and describing is actually the hard part. So, you know. I think whoever so, implements that is going to own the hearts of every tech writer in the industry. So, um, it's probably been implemented like a, thousands of times in different companies, but I doubt there's like a tool that does it. So, yeah, um, that reminds me of a quick one. I don't want to go down a primrose path, but I just happened to check um, the CD Slack channel this week, and there's a whole slew of new people that have shown up there. I think they're looking at um, Summer of Code. I was almost tempted to go on yesterday and say something, hey, we're glad you're here. And if any of you are interested in any documentation work, we'd love to have you join us at office hours. 
mm. but I thought I didn't, I didn't know exactly between CD foundation and this, I thought I'm not going to step into anything until I check with you. But. Oh, good. Well, so, and we'd used CDF Slack channel in the past for, for Google summer of code. So we may want to um, let me talk that over with uh, Mark to discuss with John Mark and uh, Alyssa, because certainly we've had good attendance at our office hours for Google Summer of Code, but if there are people on the Slack channels, uh, we can help them by pointing them towards towards other locations. Yeah, good. Right. It just seemed weird it... to me that all these people were going, I'm here, I'm interested in this stuff, and nobody was saying back, hey, we're glad you're here, so. Right. I, I don't think it's right ever a problem to invite them, though. Like you can, sure. next time someone shows up, you're like, you know, hey, cool, welcome to CDF. Uh, you know, you know, I, I help out with the Jenkins project. We're always looking for new members. You can come and hang out with us or just learn from us or, you know, right. like it doesn't have to be, you have to join the project. We're just like, hey, we're around if you want someone to talk to. Right. right. And there's, well, and, there's and we can, we can certainly answer there. The, in the past, the last year's, GSOC projects were five of the six that they ran were from CDF were Jenkins projects. And so they may be there just thinking that, hey, this is where the Jenkins project will be again. And so it's no reason we can't respond there. Good, good pointer. All right, Any, anything else on the news topics before we get to other topics? Um, yes, so since we have uh, discuss this topic, the screenshot description that you mentioned. Uh, actually, my I want to discuss the same thing as well under GSOC office hours topic. Oh, good. So my question is, yes. So my question is, uh, I'm trying to understand that would this be a good GSOC idea or is it like very easy to implement? I know we discussed, but it was the conversation was really fast for me to understand. <laughs> Gavin, what do you think? So GSOC, GSOC I, projects. I have never got involved with GSOC before, so I don't know the answer to that. Um, the, there's lots of tools out there to automate the browser, so I don't think that's hard. Um, the hard part would be hmm. taking something that's human readable, like a YAML file or a ASCII doc or something like that, <laughs> and then re-implement those steps and then save the screenshot. Um, I don't know how long a typical GSOC project should take, but uh, I don't know. I like I can I could do it because I have a lot of experience in this from past jobs. Uh, it'd probably take me a couple hour, a couple weeks, maybe less. Um, and so a new new person to this would be new to just about anyone. So I would say it's probably a month or two of you know six eight hours. So if that's something that uh, a GSOC is sized, then yeah, that sounds good. Um, if not, I can always help out someone doing it quicker and smaller, or I'll end up doing it someday when I'm frustrated. I'm like, could yeah, I are do you that? willing to mentor somebody else? Because I would think being mentored by you would be a tremendous career boost for somebody. I can't commit to mentoring because of time zones. So I can wow. help out a lot, but I can't, like, technically I'm just still at work right now. Uh, okay, got it. Okay, all right. So, if so someone else be, wanted to mentor, I could help them mentor. I just couldn't be the primary mentor. So even even if if it were later than this, doing the mentoring, because the the many of our students are like Diraj from India yeah. Standard Time. But it's like five a.m. India, isn't it? No, it's seven thirty a.m. Yeah. So well, maybe. It's... I mean, yeah. I mean, I could definitely help out. I don't know if I would want to run a project or anything. But I can okay. absolutely help out. I can code review. I can do that kind of thing. I just at this point, I'm not sure I'm willing to commit to mentorship. I wasn't expecting to because I thought time zone yeah. was more of an issue. Got it. Okay. We could specify time. Can we specify time zone for stuff? Uh, we we certainly can for the mentors. The mentors yeah. certainly have known time zones, and we can they can describe when they're available and when they're not. Right. So, Diraj, did that answer your so? Based on my guess, if it's one to two months of full-time work, that's a good GSOC project idea because GSOC says three months of half-time work. So what GSOC says is three months of 15 to 20 hours a week. 
it would be shorter if someone knew Selenium. But I think one to two months is probably normal for a new new new, new student type thing. Yeah, and, and given that, okay, so Gavin and I come from very different worlds. My world is I hate Selenium, and I think it's yeah. a terrible thing to have to deal with. <laughs> and Gavin, no, Gavin <laughs> uses it effectively. No, no, I hate Selenium. I have frustrated with Selenium too. But there are newer <laughs> tools that are selenium like that are not as flaky as selenium but knowing selenium as a concept means you can apply it to other ones pretty easily i see okay so so the uh mm. diraj did that address your question yes so it's not a strict no so that's good to know quite, quite the opposite you, i would say it's a it's probably a strong yes the challenge if you spend would be, it to mm. gifts and videos then yeah i would say absolutely I'm just talking about screenshots here, but there's probably a lot of things. Oh. There's, you know, things that Mark has made videos for that we could do the same thing, expand it after the fact and say, cool. Now we've got screenshots. Now we want to do a screen recording. Mm, uh, I'm not sure if I understood the recording part. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat? Uh, so this concept is really just about taking screenshots. But a yes. screen, a video is just a collection of screenshots. So Selenium, I don't know if Selenium does it natively, but it's not hard to say, okay, we take a screenshot every time you click on a new action and then you build that into a video. And that's, I mean, it's not hard code. It's just literally saying, okay, these 10 screenshots run at five seconds apart. Now it's a video or now it's a GIF. So we start with screenshots, then we can move on to replacing GIFs with repeatable tools and then videos too down the line. So if if this is, ends up being too short, there's lots of rooms to improve. But this is all new to okay. me, so I, again, don't know what we're looking for. Uh -huh. Okay, so I understand that uh, some couple of screenshots put together can be looked at mm -hmm. as a video. So, so how would that look like on Jenkins IO dot IO website? Like, how would you publish it? That's what I'm trying to uh, understand. A, a GIF or a, or or a MP4 oh. or something, yeah. Uh, okay. Because it, so, I mean, this can expand okay. inf infinitely. Because then, at these days, you can actually make uh, text to speech very effectively. So some of the tutorial videos. Again, this is just I can you know I can spend the next year coming up with ideas to extend this. So I wouldn't go too far into it, but we can always find more things to do if we run out if we finish something too quickly. Imagine replacing Mark with full scripts that auto narrate every time a new version of uh, Jenkins <laughs> comes out. Mark will be out of a job. Right, right. That's I feel threatened. Sorry, what I mean to say is Mark will be freed up to do things he likes doing better. <laughs> That's great. I like this. This is so great because once I got hooked on the idea of Doc as code, what I quickly saw was in there is no way we have nothing equivalent to a regression test for doc content. Yeah. And I, you know, and I looked at it and said, I have no idea how you could ever do anything like that. But this is starting to chip away at that problem. And I'm, I'm very much in one. I'm in the very much in the you do one tiny piece instead of trying to sell the whole thing. So, you know, right. I've spent the last year trying to get those preview environments working for this reason, so that you could see what a docs, when someone makes a submission, you can be like, oh, I can see this instead of guessing what it looks like. Right. You know, the next the next phase is, okay, let's see if we can automate this piece and we can automate this piece. But if I tried to document the whole thing up front, it would be very overwhelming for anyone. Even yeah, though. and it isn't how we got where we are on software testing. Yeah. No, so it's the right way. I'm just saying it's, the big picture is still interesting, not that we have to plop the solution to the big picture to do it. Yeah, anymore. and each and each time I come up with an idea, I figure someone else comes up with three more ideas, you know? So I'm just I just pitch them and see where they go. I'm excited. So Diraj, more do you have more questions? You can also tell me to slow down because I talk really fast. Diraj, you're muted. Oh, we may have lost Diraj. I think he had to just rejoin. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Sorry for that. No problem. So, did you did are your have your questions been answered, or are there more questions you would like to ask? 
yes so some of them are answered so i have two more so first one is uh, uh, i didn't want to get too technical but just wondering like how would uh, you get the steps from a yaml file like what kind of steps are we talking about here and what do you want yep. to do with that yeah those are very good questions and i don't know the answer to right now i don't think i think that's something for the the student to work out you okay, know, sure. I, so this might be something, you know, if if Mark has done the last 10 screenshots, this would be really nice for someone like Meg to come around and go, okay, these are my instructions. And the next person writes down the next instructions. And then after you, two or three people do it, then you're like, okay, cool. These instructions make sense. We can build a program from this. And then from there, the next screenshot becomes easier because we have example, right? So I don't think we want to define the steps right now. But my vote would be yeah. YAML because most of the Jenkins docs are YAML. No, right. not docs, but you know what I mean. Okay, so yeah. yes, I mean there. I've I've seen concepts in in Selenium test suites of yeah. higher level operations that then would be referenced by something in a in a small DSL, a small domain specific language that yeah. says, "Open the login page," and open the login page turns into. 20, 20 or 30 lines of Java code in some library somewhere. Yeah. So that kind of thing could be just a small domain specific language. And something like uh, cap, uh, not spell it, Capybara in Ruby is the same sort of thing, right? They are very, uh -huh. very English friendly things, which are like, find this link on the page, click on the link, move to this next section. So there are tools that are out there that do it. Um, and what about take, selecting a part of a screen? Um, or one thing that I think about that we haven't done because it takes proprietary tools as far as I know, but say the, the new item screen, which is way too long, and you want to talk about something that's at the bottom of the list. So you do the little thing where you sort of cut out the middle of it and you make it look like a torn page so that they can see the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen, but have a small size size. Or we have some where you just take a corner of the screenshot and want to point that out. So we also need to like the coordinates of the screen, whether we're taking the whole screen yeah. or a part of it. So focusing on an element is relatively easy. This is something JavaScript, you know, uh, any any Selenium-based or any browser-based scripting can go, hey, JavaScript, where is this element on the page and whatever its coordinates? That's easy. I mean, relatively easy. Right. Uh, doing this, the, the more you, um, artistic licensing, which is like, you know, splitting up a page, chopping it up, that would be more difficult. But there are tools, image library tools that you can apply effects to and do things to. So it's all doable. Um, I wouldn't do it in the first phase. Yeah. But it's totally doable. Yeah. And that's it, because then I'm wondering how, and to have something too that your average writer, because I'm not a graphics person at all. I can take sort of, I can look at the screen and say, I want that and take a shot and we've got it. But how do I specify this in a way that it will be can be automatically yeah. updated? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, that's that's again, that's something that I don't know GSOC and I don't know how much of that needs to be decided up front. But that is it. definitely a problem. I wouldn't put it in this specific project because I think it is a more complicated right. problem. But you know, again, we start somewhere and you improve. You don't necessarily need to get to the end right away. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. And uh, last question. Uh, when we were talking about this project idea, like a few minutes ago, initially, you, uh, Gavin, you mentioned a product, uh, some tool that you've been using to do this in your previous job. Uh, I was not able to catch it. Catch it yeah. I mean, I used to work at Sauce Labs, which is a Selenium uh, grid provider. So, you know, I've mm -hmm. used Selenium, but there's also Capybara, which is a, what would you call it? A layer on top of Selenium for Ruby. There's Puppeteer. Um, Microsoft has a new one as well. So, I mean, there's lots of tools. Some of them are Selenium, some of them are something else. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Isn't there one called Cypress? Yep, Cypress is another one, the big one now. And and let's see, there was one that we used with a Z name that was doing pure, absolute coordinate-based stuff image image comparison yeah there are a bunch of tools out there i was, I was looking oh, at it when uh 
when I was looking at trying to rewrite Jenkins.io, there's a bunch of tools out there that will compare images and screenshots. And so you can actually highlight, oh, this screenshot changed. Did you know that we meant to make this? I don't know if that's necessary for this project because this one's more about making the screenshots. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah the, and but Selenium is web browser automation. Well, they all are. Capybara is web browser automation. Is yeah. Puppeteer also? Yeah. Okay. So Selenium is its own protocol. Capybara, I think, uses Selenium. Puppeteer, I think, uses uh, WebDriver, which is the new official standard instead of the hacked version. And I believe Cypress uses WebDriver as well. Yeah, I don't okay. think it's Selenium. Hey, long time no oh. see. Yeah, same. How's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Okay, you said, what did you say about Cypress there? Kristen? I believe it's WebDriver as well. Sorry. Okay, all right. Yes, that's helpful. So I was asking this because I worked uh, I worked on building a automation framework, but that used Selenium and Python specifically. So in this project, if we do it, it would be more like Java, right? Selenium and Java side of things. Oh. I think the docs typically does uh, Ruby. Well, and, and, yeah. and no shame if, well, if this would be an independent tool in that sense, wouldn't it? So yeah. I'm not sure we care what language it's expressed That's also in. That's very true, yeah. I mean, it's because this thing, this thing has, this is not much different in terms of where the context will run than the pipeline steps doc generator. Yeah. or the you know they're just separate tools that we run and we yeah. their results get grabbed by the the build process and put into the site so yeah. if if you wanted to do it in python i i don't yeah admittedly yeah in it, fact i would say it should be separate than the docs because it should create a pr with the docs right it shouldn't be run every time the docs are generated it should be run every time we trigger release or you know once a month or something like that Right, right. It, it's certainly not a PR-driven yeah. um, generator, right? It shouldn't. It definitely should not happen every PR. So I think Mark is saying he wants to do it in Rust. <laughs> yeah, they'll say like, just let's, let's make sure that we just can um, have people who will maintain it too. Because <laughs> it's yeah. great to exactly. like, it's so we much can bring fun. back our Tyler after this. So yes. we're making our first Rust tool. Come back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you're clear, I think Python is a great language, yeah, and yeah. all of you who love YAML and, and then moan about Python space-based indentation, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> oh, if, if, if I was allowed to, I'd write everything in, in uh, J, uh, JSON, but nobody likes that. So, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I would definitely not like that. So that that is that so a data format is a data is format. All I want. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the biggest YAML fan either, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Okay. Back to your question, um, Diraj, did, are there other questions you've got? So oh, that's all. Yeah. Uh, I'm clear for now. Okay. So it, it could be, it could be most any language and, and I think because it is a separate tool, right? So yeah. now back all joking aside, I'm not sure I'm ready to take rust into the code base just because no. I don't. I think we have quantity near zero Rust programmers in the team, in the in the well, Jenkins you project. You get Rust right programmers now. by having Rust programs for people to work on. So if your goal is yeah. to get Rust programmers, you're going about this wrong. That, you're correct. I am in fact going about it wrong. That's I. I embrace yeah. my wrong. No, I, I think you're right. I think there's there's Go stuff, there's JavaScript stuff, there's Ruby stuff. There is not very right. much Python stuff left in the ecosystem, so I probably wouldn't do it there. But it's fine. Java's fine. Groovy's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so I'm going to rewind back into the earlier pieces of the agenda. So Gavin yeah, has created a, a typo checking tool that is now actively used on Jenkins.io uh, pull request. It checks spelling and it tells us when pull requests to Jenkins.io have spelling errors. Yeah. Gavin, do you want to do a demo of this? Would you want to do you want me to? Do you... uh, I'm on my work machine, so I can't really oh, demo you can. it. Okay. Um, but I mean, uh, where was, do I have one open? Let's see quickly. I've got one. I can bring one up very simply. So yeah. here, I've, 
I'm Essentially, just gonna bring I, up... I found a, you know, I, I'm involved with a couple of open source projects and uh, one of them is Home Assistant and they just enabled this on theirs and they're very excited and which got me very excited because I'm easily excitable. Um, and yeah, it was just a, it's a very quick uh, GitHub action that will come in and uh, re run through very, very quickly all the, all the files it can find. And it's, um, it's a code aware spell checker. So a lot of spell checkers will get messed up because, you know, coding doesn't actually match words, but this one's a code aware one. So it knows it, in, in ASCII doc, the word boundaries are these and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we can find one where it fails. Well, actually I was going to bring in the cleanup. I was going to show the cleanup oh. one because because th that was that's a great one. So here we let's see where is it? It was oh, fixed you may wanna, type. Do uh, I have to go further back? Uh, oh, you it, may want to author by me. Yeah, that's a good idea, right? So author by Gavin. Okay, so cleanup all the no not the, yeah, it was, so, it's this uh, one, spell check. One either one of those two will work. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it was a simple little uh, GitHub action I, I you know copied from somewhere else, and then it's a matter of because we have a lot of old docs was going there pretty ignores and there's a lot of uh, like word names, proper names that I couldn't figure out how to ignore, so I just ignored the entire file. It, it's not great, but it's not the worst. And then when I did that, I just ran uh, the auto fix, so I went through and auto fixed all the, almost all of these, and then I think Mark, Diane, and I went through a, a pass and manual fixes. Um, anything that you know the word was changed to the wrong one and then now it should stay green until we come up with something really obscure um but there's yeah there's a lot of little things that typoed over the years that we didn't notice i saw jira tags were typoed i saw some function names that were typoed you know you had the contributing doc itself with uh right right typoed. there's there's an awkward one a doc site's got a spelling error and it's contributing doc oops yeah <laughs> so you know uh this was the first pass i thought we could do it here and it was fairly good success um so that one's one of the ones that was not a success that set sir thing um, oh but yeah yeah daniel oh, so pointed out the actual function uh, class name is sir not set oh oh okay so that was one that okay there was a but but this one for instance splitted yeah. to split yeah it's somewhat grammar aware so i mean and it's constantly improving like they're doing prs all the time um and yeah, so I'm, I did this as a kind of like, can we do it? And it passed and I'm really excited about it. So we hooked it up. And so I am sorely seeing if I can hook it up to the, the JEP as well. So the Jenkins Enhancement Protocol or proposals, proposals. Um, and maybe even Jenkins itself, because there's a lot of HTML files that have typos in them we could fix up as well, so. Um, I do want to get this embedded into the PR because right now to find out what was wrong, you have to go click into the action and stuff like that. So I might do that via Jenkins. I think Mark and I talked earlier. I might do that by GitHub Actions. But yeah, you know, any improvement here to make it easier for people to do is a win. Right. What does it do if the typo, for, I'm always trying to type the and leaving the T off. So you're left with he, which is a legitimate word. Yeah, uh, you know, it'll it'll be somewhat context aware. So mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how it works. It's not my, it's not my code base, but it does seem to understand that he's not appropriate in the sentence. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, so it's got some, some sentence structure awareness. It does. I don't know how much uh, okay. it's rust and I really don't understand most of what it's doing, but it does seem to be somewhat aware of, you know, and it's yeah, only I mean, get even better. if it catches 80 or 60% of the yeah. typos. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and and seeing the hundreds of hundreds of fixes, and it was literally hundreds of fixes that it applied to the existing files, that was a win no matter what. Indeed. So again, right. this is just one of those, you know, thought it'd be useful. We hooked it up. It's been useful. I had no real plans for it. I just saw it and it was useful. So, you know, it's a good thing to always mention that anyone can do this really. I have the unique advantage that I can uh, edit Jenkins files. But I mean, anyone can add proposals or ideas and, you know, can always, if anything comes up, you can always ping me, I can help out too, so. Yeah, and, and think of, think of the, the benefit of, okay, we got HTML files, like you said, help files yeah. that probably have many, many spelling errors in them. Yeah. 
And if we, the more we get this hooked up, the easier it is for plugin authors to hook it up to theirs, and then they can get their help files updated. So yeah. Um, it does remind me though. I was thinking about it when we we're talking about this topic. Uh, the preview environment has been running now for what a month. Uh huh. Um, has there been any concerns or issues? It's been. I think it's been working fairly reliably. Uh, as okay, I've yeah. used it repeatedly, and I've seen no complaints whatsoever. Um, I think there were one or two times over the course of the last month where I, I needed to do something like merge the master branch in in order to get the preview environment yeah, to generate. Old, but old ones, yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. Cool. Um, would typos catch something, um, or can it be trained? Would it like check um, blacklist and whitelist, for example, slave? And we can't oh, do could we? Could we do it? Scrubbed on slave. I you actually don't know. That master. Inclusive um, naming. Mark, do you want to? I think I think you can actually. Um, you know, yeah. There's a list that it won't allow. Um, do you want to add a link? I just do a quick Google for cargo. No. Cargo. Not cargo. I got screwed that up last time. Cargo CI slash create, typo. Create. Oh, create. create dash CI slash typos. Create CI slash typos like that, right? Typos. Yeah, without typoing typos. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go look at this. There is a docs for it. I mean, their docs are not the best. Um, they were kind of irritating to read up, but you know, they could always do, you know, learning and improving. So I think it's under design. They have docs. You can go see what the configuration is. It's all a, another, I think they have a Toml file. Um, I really, I rather YAML than Toml. I don't understand Toml, but yeah. So there are a lot of features that we're not doing. I just, you know, hooked up what we could work and you can expand from there. Very cool. cool. Great. Let me put a, a link to that into our notes. Great. Excellent. All right. Any back to the preview environment. I'm not aware of any issues, any hiccups or problems there. Any others aware of issues or problems that have been encountered with preview environments running on Jenkins.io? Yeah. Okay. Great. Gavin, you okay if we go to next topic? Jenkins is the way. Yeah. I mean, it's this is the least involved for me topic. Yeah. Well, but but for me, this is one where I'm worried it's it's we haven't done anything with it and you did some great work on it. I think yeah. we need to get it the next step and get it merged now. So I will say it's almost all automated. Uh, the only parts that are not automated were the three templates I think I created okay. and everything else is automated. So if there are problems, we can regenerate, we can rebase if the, excuse me, if the, um, yeah, if there's, you know, if the PR gets out of date and we need to regenerate or uh, Alyssa makes changes to the sites, we can regenerate. I tried to make sure it was all generatable because it's a lot of content. And, I I, and that was actually one of the thoughts that I had was how, what will this do to the repository size? We're already at a 60, 60 megabyte repository. Is yeah. this going to double the repository size? Is it huge? I didn't look. Um, okay. There are bunch of assets in there so there's zip files which you probably don't need pdfs i think uh, uh, okay some books and stuff. i don't know what's in there i literally just blanket downloaded all the assets got it uh, all right so i did mention that we might want to just make us a, a sub sub you know jenkins is a way to or the way that jenkins.io or something like that and make it a separate site and be like not in, integrate it tightly which is totally doable you know again i wrote a script that converts all the raw HTML into uh, ASCII doc files. So it doesn't matter if it's part of Jenkins IO or something separate. Oh, okay. Got it. So it could be, could be a completely, it, it could be a completely separate uh, subdomain. Yeah. If we don't intend to ever touch it again, a complete new site is probably the way to go. If we continue to want to continue to import new uh, um, stories, customer stories, and we want it to be used really easily to do, it might be worth being in Jenkins IO just because you got visibility. Yeah, well, but but okay, we've I mean we've got today, we've got the plugin site yeah. that is is really a separate thing. Yeah. And yet and yet we manage it quite well. So 
for me, I, I'm, I'm very interested in the do it as a separate site because we want to turn off the Jenkins is the way.io site and make it a redirect to this new location, yeah. but it could be and easily a redirect. Domain, to you know, and we're not doing the hosting. Yeah. I mean, we can throw it on Netlify really easily. We have free hosting with them. So we can throw another site on there really easily. Ah, good. All right. Okay. So let me put the mark to discuss with Alyssa Tong on the transition plan. Yeah. I, I wanted to, and I totally forgot. I wanted to separate the templates from the content for PRs and have two PRs, but I, di I didn't. I end up merging them by accident and then it was hard to undo them. So mm -hmm. I can easily do it. You just delete one directory and you can be done with it right but yeah i have i have a set of scripts that generates all the contents we don't have to have it in jenkins io but it is concern of mine to be how big it's probably going to make the repo okay well but and but actually, i mean I that's conceptually we could we could even if we were to shut down the jenkins uh, jenkins is the way.io wordpress site and yeah. bring up the same url on netlify yeah. that i think I, you're saying could be made to work yeah, uh, the, the what I have done is is not one hundred percent one to one, but it's not okay. hard to change it. Um, like I, instead of having slash maps, I have Jenkins is the way slash maps or something like that. Like I, I modify the URLs a bit, but there's no, it's not really hard to switch back. Great. I just okay. wanted to make it fit into the uh, the repo. Thank you. Okay. Content. All right, so let me take it. I'm going to take it to Alyssa and to the infra team because they may say, "Hey, look, let's let's do this. Let's host it on Netlify, and and keep it separate as a separate location, and then just add to it from. So this would still let us maintain it as code. Your mm -hmm. changes would let us conceptually maintain it as code, but it would be." Could still be at the Jenkins is the way dot io URL. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's about sixty megs, six zero megs of content. Okay. All right. So not a lot, but it's enough. But yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that, so that's roughly doubling the size of the Jenkins dot io repository. Good. All right. So allow us to manage the the site as code. Yeah. And that sixty. Sorry, I'll let you finish. No, go ahead. The 60 megs includes all the PDFs, all the, the books, everything, all the attachments that are ever uploaded to Jenkins is, is the way. So we might be able to reduce that quite a bit. I don't know. Yeah, but see, uh, but uh, and 60 megabytes is not unreasonable for a site on Netlify, right? That's not something right. that's going to exceed no, their what it's they'll actually, accept. Honestly, GitHub will be the no, no, Netlify doesn't care. Uh, GitHub will be the limit. So apparently, they have a hundred meg limit, but I think it's per file. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, no problem. Then. That's great. All right, excellent. Thank you. Okay, cool. I dominated way too much of this meeting. I thought well, it was going to come hang out and it's work. So good to have you here. I've never gotten to hear you before. I've just heard the legend. So, and see <laughs> you, and you, and you bailed me out at midnight more times than I can count. Um, can we do we have a rough estimate a guess as to how much the site might grow in the next day one year? Well, so so Alyssa wants to reduce the funding of the organization that had been creating it. So the the it was it would switch from a a pulled model where we were actively promoting it to more organic. So I don't expect dramatic growth over the course of the next year. Okay. Yeah. If you want to pull up one, I don't know if it, the the PR will let you, but if you pull up one of the ADOC files, it's, it's relatively easy to add them, add and remove things. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so, you're 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 willing to risk me clicking the files change tab here? Yes. I think and they're all by default. <laughs> Only six hundred files. So, and look at yeah. my scroll bar over there. You can barely see Ooh. it. It's so small. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little intense. Um, you're just looking for any of the adocs. So just you know, page down a couple of times, and you should start getting the adoc files. Yeah. Right. Right. While my browser busily tries to do the do we use a jump to a fire file filter? Yeah, probably. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Jump to. Yeah, either that yeah. or the file filter option. 
just so it's like okay so you're suggesting i should look only at uh, right i don't know how to do the opposite of that make a yeah. check everything except yeah except that. now i'm having to wait for it to to oh is it thinking oh no oh no <laughs> uh... there okay all right it's it's now allowing me to filter good okay and those pngs are probably the big one okay all yeah, right okay so so you know the adoc files here are, are fairly standard a bunch of metadata in there i tried to make the um as, as you know following as much as possible so everything's in one uh, adoc file every story so that includes location the name the industry who submitted it um i tried to make uh, the data more machine readable and less just random HTML. So it's about 98% there. There are definitely some parsing errors. You know, you'll see things that are merged together, but it will get us enough. Um, so if a new story comes in, you copy and paste this template and you're done, you know? That's great. So this, this gives us the facility to add stories and, and not have to go through somebody else who manages a WordPress site for us. Excellent. Yeah. So that was the goal because I like machine readable. So excellent. Yeah. Super. Thank you, Gavin. Thanks very much. So I, I think we go we go forward with this and I'll, I'll let me talk to the infra team and others about hey, what's the what's the preferred way? You you just to reinforce, you said that Netlify should be an easy way to host this if we want to. They're willing oh, yeah. to host content for us, and we have an account with oh, them. Well, they, they gave us uh, they gave us a, a open source account, and as long as we don't use their CI, which we don't want to do anyways, mm -hmm. they don't really have limits. The limits for how much CI time you get, which is like two hundred okay. a month, and one build of plugin site and Jenkins IO kind of ate up a third of that. So <laughs> we do all the builds uh, on Jenkins IO in, in okay. Jenkins. We're good. We can do whatever else we want for static sites easily. Great. Okay. So this, and there they've got content delivery network, all the magic stuff that, that means and we're not going to bury. Throw, um, no, no, Netlify can hand, probably eat us whole and not even care. Uh, no, okay. but uh, we can hook up fast, fastly, or whatever else we want on top of it again. Okay. So. Great. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. So we've talked Jenkins is the way. We've talked preview environment, Google, Google Summer of Code, we've talked. Uh, so far, and now I think it's this month, but so far this month, we've used 236 megs of 400 gigs of bandwidth. Oh, so we've got a little bit of ways to go. Wow. That's, little, that's good. Yeah. A little. <laughs> like two orders the of magnitude. Okay. Yeah. We actually use more of uh, Algolia's limits every month than we do of Netlify's. Yeah. Hey, but with Algolia, we've, we've hit 50% pretty much ev almost every month, haven't yeah. we? So, yeah. okay. All right. Um, okay. So oh, now you guys can finish everything. Okay. A anything, anything else on those topics before we go on to other topics? Okay. So, so then the fast one here, she called Africa. I'll likely submit that project ideas form with proposals. I'm assuming that the dominant set of, of coaches and mentors is likely this group here. So Kristen, Meg, Diraj, me, and I'll be looking for others, but I haven't received any replies on the, on the community.jenkins.io site. So people are not saying, ooh, pick me, pick me to be a mentor. Again, I'm around, but I can't commit. Well, and, and yours, in this case, time zone is really bad for this one because this one is really needs to be in Europe, in Western Europe time zone because the the people are in West Africa. So yeah. I'm I wouldn't I, mean, I wouldn't I'm attempt to rope you into this one. I'm also up till one or two a.m. most days, anyways. So like I said, I can help out definitely async helping out, but I can't like meetings and, and mentor all the time. Right, right. And, and from last year too, like Mike probably tried, but like we really do need help sometimes getting things approved and like yeah, the async stuff is just as important as like being able to be present in the meetings because yeah occasionally right. we were running up against some well we're trying to get this in but no one really like we need some reviews or some like help from us from other places so it's like that, that would, that's just as good so. and while i'm not technically a copy editor i do have merge rights to jenkins io so yeah right yeah good Here's point i could say from last year well now there's some if we had any actual writing projects i might be worthwhile as a mentor but Last time I was trying to run some of these meetings and I didn't know how to do what they were trying to do. 
and basically the meetings were like, well, we need to talk to Mark about this and we need to talk to Mark about this. And a couple of then Angelique and Oleg started chiming in, but that's that's the thing too, is that we might, if there were some people with brains, we might be able to tag team some of this stuff. Well, and, and I think what that means is we need to use project ideas uh, for which we have mentors, right? We, we, we can't choose project ideas uh, with, we, a project idea without a mentor is not a workable thing. It's not gonna right. succeed. What I'm wondering is, are people, why, is this something, you know, it isn't like when you say out, hey, you know, who wants free beer? Say, do you want to be a mentor? And you're like, yeah. Whereas if you go and say, well, you've wanted to get this done. And if you'd be willing to mentor a She Code Africa person or two, you maybe could get it done. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know. And I don't know if we have the time to go out and beg and plead and buy roses for these people either. So the, the two major projects and in in problems in that area, which I know Mark and I are, are aggressively trying to address, is Jenkins has no communication set up. So there's, we have, what, 2,000 2, plugins. We don't really have any way to talk to any of the current plugin maintainers. Um, even the people who are doing, like, uh, support, we have people who are just on Gitter and not anywhere else. Um, it's hard to talk to people. Yeah. And the other problem, which I've had at dozens of conferences I've helped out at, Mentor is a very loaded title. People people think that they have to have like 20 years experience to mentor. And you're like, no, 50 minutes more experience than the other person is enough to mentor someone. Right, right. And it, it so, may be something that we need to build too is that in, in these things we need to be talking about, I mean, what we ran into last year with this She Called Africa and we found it and we wrote out to all these companies and they said, can you support it? And they sent checks back instantly, but no people. And yeah. to start understanding that if open source is going to work, we need more than just money. Yeah. And that's something we can be talking about softly at different conferences and sort of build the, I don't know, inspire people or something. I don't know. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'm going to keep advocacy is important to me. So if I get a chance, I got all kinds of ideas there. But the community forums is one of those things that were like, these mailing lists aren't working. You know, if someone posts to the wrong list, you get, you know, three people telling you you did it wrong. And that's it. With the community form, if you can submit to the community form, we can move it to the right spot. Mm -hmm. You know, and that helps. That removes the barrier of the barrier there. You know, so we're just gonna. I'm just gonna keep one project at a time. Keep trying to help out. You know, make the plugin site easier to report bugs. You know, wherever I can help, I'm gonna keep helping. But it, mentor is definitely one of those words that I've been doing this 20 years, and people still feel uncomfortable every time they hear the word mentor. Even mm -hmm. I feel com uncomfortable, even though I'm doing it right. I feel uncomfortable. It's only because Mark said you will mentor. I need yeah. help. Yeah. And so. But honestly, it real. My very first job, I was training a student literally the, the day after I was hired, and it, and that was my very first job. Right. So you really only need fifteen minutes more experience than <laughs> the next person. But you have to know something. I mean, that's the thing. And nope. I'm I'm a writer. I'm used to like if it's if I'm mentoring another writer, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. um, and we can start talking about don't do this and you shouldn't do this and what, you know, but when I'm off there meant, you know, I'm used to being on the other end of the software stuff is you tell me what you did and I'll write it up. But that's, that's the point is you don't actually know, need to know something. You need to be uh, a little bit on the confident side. So you can say very clearly like, hey, you know, this is where you want to look. But mostly mentoring is listening to the person, you know, going cool. I understand what you're saying. Uh, you know, this is what I would do, or, you know, that's a good idea or anything, just listening to the person yeah. and making connections. I mean, you've been, what, you've been working on the doc site for a while now. You probably know some of the people to talk to, you know, when the security thing comes up, oh, it's, it's going to be Daniel or Radic, you know, right. the mentoring doesn't come from the actual telling you how to solve a problem. The mentoring comes from just fostering and growing someone. Right. But you have to know something. I disagree with that. I think you need to know some. Oh, yeah. Okay. Something. You know someone. <laughs> yeah. You right. need to yeah. know something, but you don't need to know very much. Yeah. And and people are going to constantly be telling you or telling themselves that I don't know enough. Right. And the answer is, if you know something, anything at all, you probably have enough. What I think also is that right now, like we say, well, we've only got four mentors. And I say, oh, my God, all these brilliant people, and there's only four that are considered worthy to be mentors. Surely I would not in that esteemed group. You know, it's like at the point where we say we've got 100 mentors, and I say, yeah, I might be, you know, 
there's a hundred other people doing this, I might be able to do it. But yeah, but if for every person like that, they're going to be another person would be like, well, there's already a hundred people. I don't need to help. Yeah, you know, I was so like, no matter what, too, yeah. there's always one side or the other. So mm-hmm. it, I think I think the honesty thing is just keep hounding people and saying, hey, you know, make sure the commitment is known up front because, you know, uh-huh. what does a mentoring require? Does it require 12 hours a day of work or is it just like I need an hour? Oh, you know, an hour a week, you know, and right. keep asking. Right. Mark, do you know who we should? Um, can we grab Angelique? She was good last time. Yeah. I'll, I'll certainly ask her. I'm not sure she's available. I've, I've got several people inside CloudBees that I'll ping uh, okay. that are that are in the sort of in the Europe time zone yeah. that could therefore be a, a, a good fit. Do you want mostly docs people? No, no, actually. No, because it's we, mostly not docs work. We yeah, need project but, managers. That, well, we got Mark well, for a bit, but yeah. We need some technical people to help. Yeah. Well, the, and, and the, the candidates are want to be programmers. Right, the candidates want to be programmers, and therefore, they're they're trying to develop programming skills. So the idea is, choose projects that fit with programming skills. Now, it, it, I would love to have somebody help me get rid of jQuery one from a couple of crucial plugins, like you helped me with another plugin, Gavin. Yeah, but that's a that's a fairly unique set of skills that I'm not sure we'll find in brand new coders from from west oh, africa I, I disagree with that one as well oh you there's do actually, oh good you know uh removing jquery is not hard there's a such a site called you might not need jquery i think.com which okay. literally you go and find the jquery thing you, you were using and it tells you how to use a native thing it's a bit outdated now it hasn't probably been updated in like four years but it's a start you know and you know you have to start somewhere which is what i've been repeating myself the whole night right start somewhere mm-hmm. interesting so, okay because gotcha. cool. it, it's something though in general it's like i hate to say but we need to preach i'm getting disgusted it's like everybody needs to go back and read the first article it's not free beer and that's what most yeah. people think open source is yeah and okay. so so like I said, to... i'll help where i can but i'm not sure time wise i can commit right but and, you know and... if you need a peer, peer review i'm great because i'm around at the end of the day when someone's just getting started you know right and right and that attitude. might be enough like as like sometimes like sometimes that's enough like just having someone who doesn't have to sit and ask a question and wait for like a, a like hours or anything right. <laughs> like and well, that, you know what you can do too, you, can Meg, look at right? a, you can yeah. look at a pr and tell the mentor this person doesn't understand such and such yeah no. or yeah i can point a mentor and who gets stuck, you know, if you have someone who, you know, does have the time commitment, but can get stuck, there's someone like me who around who can, okay, oh, I have 15 minutes, I can sit down on a call and help you. And then you can turn around when the, the students are around to actually do the longer explanation, right? right? Just your attitude, I love. Like anything, like that's what I'm saying, like even that stuff for Google, like even this can translate over to the Google Summer of Code stuff too. Yeah. Because I think we end up with a lot of, um, terror around the commitment for that too and sometimes like just if the word technical advisor sounds better than yeah. mentor like that sometimes that's just all that's needed and <laughs> there's so, some like somewhere to go or point out or like yeah even like steering maybe the person who's like primarily but maybe going to be even awake or available during the time zone time I mean, just year, any, anything right? yeah, yeah yeah exactly it's like i'm just saying like just anything where excuse me, like it just kind of helps because when you're kind of doing it and eventually when the mentors kind of whittle down or it's only one, it's really hard for one person to be the single source of the single contact. Right. So yeah, just many hands make light work. What yeah, so. is, my favorite thing is the rubber duck, right? So I have, yeah. I have rubber sharks, which are almost the same thing. <laughs> nice. I love it. But yeah. Like... All right. Well, so we have we have just about used up our time. Any other topics we need to bring here before we before we close our session? Okay, there's nothing breaking on system V to system D. Oh no, there's major breaking, but I think it's much more than we can discuss in three minutes. Cool. And my need- PRs, as far as I can tell, nothing's happening. I want that big one. I want to know how we get somebody to say this is better than we've got, and it does no harm. We can fix it later. Okay. Could, could we just make that executive decision? Right. Sure, sure, absolutely. Which, <laughs> which, which, which one a, is it? No, because it's, it's, it's security. I've got to have, and Mark's got to have either Daniel or Waddick nod their heads. Okay, 
because the other thing we can do is like if we know that there's certain improvements we can just pre-open a ticket for it like pre-open a jenkins or like the github issue that we're using we can just open that up maybe put some notes in there and be like reference it directly from the pull request and be like this will be addressed by this so, have you all seen and, the uh create issue from comment in github yeah see there we go <laughs> even I, better i love it because i i only found out about it like a month ago in the dot 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 next to the comment you can That's actually cool. click on it and it will say create a ticket or create an issue and you're that done. would be like maybe perfect for this because we'd be like daniel vodic do you have any comment like just put it down in a comment we'll create a ticket and then yeah. we'll be able to say let's go and then that way you're right meg because i think that sometimes maybe we have some stuff that hangs around here for a while because it's not a thousand percent perfect yeah. but it's yeah. much and better it's, than well, it this one is bad because it's a, it's much too big for one pr but yeah it was moving all these files there's nothing to do sure. but to do it all in one but so, gotcha so but it's, it's hard big, it was right ugly, there right and, where where is it right here go, go back RC. down to one of the uh comments or right, okay so here's a comment reference in new issue Oh, that thing. Oh, okay, cool. good. I've never used that. Okay, so yeah. reference. Well, you can oh. click on it. It won't do anything without you submitting the next page. But you click on it, it pops up a window and says, you know, here's the here's who originally posted it. Here's the comment. It links directly to the comment. Bam, you're done. You can move on. Nice. I, I, I don't know when they added it. They've been putting a lot of work into the issue. That's pages, awesome. But it's so good. Oh, that's not. Oh, I love it. And it that. works for it works for any comment anywhere. So a com comment on a commit, a comment on a PR, comment on line of code. I think it's even the top level thing. Damn, bam, done. Nice, perfect, perfect. Because then, okay, and then Meg, if you had like, extra one. things you do, you can add it to that too after we read yeah. it. Right. And uh, Basil, Basil had a really snarky but good thing. Is sometimes you just have to tell someone and say what do you want me to do i can't guess what you're trying to say you know like give me an actionable item for the next thing and because sometimes people will be like mm, this isn't perfect and that doesn't that doesn't give you anything to do with that information right right so if someone gives you feedback and says hey this isn't good you're like is it good enough for now and i can do another release after this right because part of the purpose of this was to get this section restructured so yeah. that we could go at it with small prs and until we get this merged, I mean, I've got some others out there, some of which are far from ready and some I think are close. So, yeah. so it's okay to be a little aggressive. Have... Huh? It's a little, it's okay to be a little aggressive saying, okay, can I, can we merge this and do follow-up PRs? Right. right. Okay. And it's seven o'clock. You guys all have another call, right? No, no, actually to this week, no, no second call, but oh. I want to end on time. So so this is a good time for us to, to talk about ending anyway. So Okay. Gavin, thank you for coming. I've enjoyed it immensely and learned I'll, a lot I'll of I'll try course. to come more often, but my Thursday nights are not the best. So Yeah. Ah. All right. I think I think we're set. Any other topics before we close? Nope. No. Good nope. meeting. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. Okay, thanks everybody. Take Recording care. will be available within the next 24 hours or so. Terrific. Awesome.